Hi, I'm Pam, and this is my monthly update video letting you know everything that I was up to in the month of October. Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well and enjoying the start of fall. We'll just start with some updates. Don't have a ton of updates in terms of channel things, but um, as usual, there was a new episode of Point and Drink Adventure, my podcast with my friend Michelle. In the last one, we talked about all the games and movies we've been watching or playing. We drank Gold Rush cocktails, which were delicious. These episodes keep creeping longer and longer and longer. They st when we started out, they were like just over an hour. Now they're creeping up to two. We just recorded a new one on Friday, which should be coming out probably around, maybe a little bit before um, this video is coming out. But that one was like pushing two hours. And since it's October, I've been watching all the horror movies. I think I met around 18 horror movies I've watched so far. So I didn't talk about every single one of them, but if you're interested in uh, what I've been watching, especially a bunch of really good new horror movies from like 2023, 2024, um, check out the next episode of Point and Drink Adventure, which should be out around now. October was also kind of busy for me personally. October 4th is my birthday, so I had some good times for that. I went to the Toronto Zoo, which I hadn't been to in probably 12 years or so, and it was a really good time. I ended up walking, according to my Fitbit, like 13 kilometers over the course of the day. Dylan and I did like every single exhibit, went to every pavilion and saw every area of the zoo, which was a lot of fun. It was a nice, cool day, and most of the animals were up and around, except for the very lazy Arctic wolves. But it was a good time. I really like the zoo. Um, it's also my mom's birthday on the same day, so we went out for a very fancy dinner at a restaurant called Aloe, which was amazing. Amazing food, amazing service. It was all really good. Um, and then I had a little trip during the month as well. Two of my friends, uh, Riley and Brian, if you've been around since the Media Maven days, it's that Riley, um, they just got married in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. So we went out to Cape Breton for five days, I think. So we went for the wedding and then had a few days buffer on either side so we could do a little bit of exploring the island. And it was gorgeous. It's great to see it in the fall when all the fall leaves are changing colors. Um, sadly, it rained almost the entire time, which was unfortunate, but it was still beautiful. The wedding was a lot of fun. Um, it was really nice, really good speeches, a lot of really fun dancing. And then we did the Cabot Trail, ate a bunch of seafood, uh, did the Cape Breton Highlands National Park, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, really nice to drive through, even when it's overcast, just like the trees and the leaves changing was like so vibrant and it's just like such a nice place to be over on the East Coast. I find everyone is so friendly there and like there's no traffic, <laughs> which was really nice. But uh, yeah, Cape Breton was beautiful. Seeing all the fall colors has made me a bit nostalgic for back to school season. This just seems like the perfect time to learn something new. So I'm looking to this video's sponsor, Skillshare, who's making learning something new easier than ever. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with classes led by creatives. There are thousands of classes to choose from. You can learn about building your brand with video, finding your creative identity, graphic design, sound, productivity, and more. Classes range from beginner to advanced and help you to level up your skills. After learning from the Productivity Masterclass last month, I wanted to check out Skillshare's learning paths. These are curated sequential class collections that help you master a specific skill. I found a learning path specifically about creative productivity to show me how to kickstart and sustain any project. Sustaining is always the hardest part by far for me, and this series of classes has some really helpful advice on building good habits. If you're interested in learning something new this fall, join Skillshare. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial. Go ahead and get started with Skillshare today. So I actually have some pickups to show off today. They're not video games, but they are games. Uh, while we were in Nova Scotia on the way back to Halifax from Cape Breton, we stopped in 
somewhere. Inverness, maybe? Wherever St. Francis Xavier University is. Um, and there was this game shop that was having a going out of business sale, which is sad that they're going out of business, but everything was 30% off. So we were looking at the board games, since we do like board games, um, and we picked up Dominion, which is a deck building game that I have actually played a lot before. I played it um, like on tabletop in real in person with friends, and I also used to play a lot of it online. I don't know if that's something that's still around, but uh, it's just a really fun deck builder. Fairly simple, like it does, you don't have to read three hours of rules in order to get into the game, and you can play it with I think two to four players. Yeah, so it's nice that you can play it with just two. So we have played this one round of this. Um, sort of, I got back up to speed. Dylan learned it a little, but it's lots of fun. Looking forward to playing more. Also, while we were there, I saw something that I'd never seen before. It was called Vampire the Masquerade Chapters, which is apparently was a Kickstarter a few years back. Um, it's a giant box. It costs a lot of money, like 270 Canadian dollars, and we would never have been able to get it into a suitcase and take it on a plane back to Toronto. So I just sort of filed it away in my brain. And then I came back and the World of Darkness YouTube channel had an interview with the developers where they also said they were selling it for $100 on their website with free shipping. So I ended up getting that. Excuse me, it's very large. Oh my God. So this is Empire of the Masquerade chapters. Look at this big boy. This must weigh like 30 or 40 pounds. It's huge. Uh, so this is kind of like a combo of the tabletop game and kind of a choose your own adventure. So you don't need a game master. Um, there's chapters for each thing. I think there's 30 chapters or something in here. Um, and it's got little scenarios and it's got dialogue trees and everything. There's so much stuff in it. There's just like rule books and little figures and cardboard cutouts. Um, so I'm pretty excited to give this a try. This is also something you can play on your own if you want, but it's one to four players. So I'm looking forward to trying this at some point. I'm not looking forward to ever moving it again because it's so gigantic, but uh, yeah, I'm excited to play this one. All right, so now on to what I've been playing. There was, as usual, a number of games. The first game that I finished is Valiant Hearts Coming Home. Uh, I think this just came out last year by Ubisoft. Um, a number of years ago, maybe, I don't know what time is, 10 years, eight years, 15, who the hell knows? Uh, Valiant Hearts was released and I really enjoyed it. It was a story about four different characters uh, during World War I and you sort of controlled each of them, sort of like in a kind of point and click adventure way, but there were these little musical segments and quick time events. And it was just like a very sort of emotional story about these characters and their experiences during the war. Mm -hmm. It did end up being one of my favorite. It, it was in my top 100 games list. You know when I made that like a million years ago? Uh, so I really liked that. So I actually had not heard anything about a sequel coming out, but it just appeared on my Xbox one day. So I decided to try it out. And this carries on, you know, further on the war. It looks back at some of the characters that you played in the first game, plus introduces some new ones. My problem with this is that it was clearly made for mobile, like, uh, or Netflix. Like Netflix was one of the co, I don't know, developers or whatever for it. So the control scheme is like exceedingly simple in a way that's kind of annoying if you've actually got a proper controller to play it with. It also, even more than the first one, like asks very little of you in terms of gameplay. Um, it still has beautiful music. There's some really nice scenes in it, but it didn't, you know, hit as hard as the first game did. Overall, my experience was just kind of like, Oh yeah, that was nice, but you know, nothing that's really going to stick with me like the first Valiant Hearts. But it was interesting and um, yeah, I I was in just interested to know that it existed at all, honestly. 
Next thing I played and finished is Cat Quest 2. This is a game by the Gentle Bros. I believe it's from 2019. I actually made a little mini video on it um, last week. If you haven't watched that video, please do. Um, seems like it's not a format that people like or a game that people are interested in, but uh, I wanted to start a new series specifically looking at co-op games and what it's like to play them co-op and whether I recommend them since I play so many now. And Cat Quest 2 is basically like a brighter, cuter, simpler Diablo kind of game. It's like an action RPG. You play a cat and a dog going through this kingdom, picking up quests, going in dungeons, getting treasure, and it was just really adorable. It was just full of puns. I absolutely loved the way that it handled loot. You um, should watch my video for more information on that, but it doesn't just throw all kinds of loot that you have to sort through and sell and throw away. It just has a very smart, streamlined loot system. It's also just really fun to play, different equipment, different spells to use, very funny bonkers quests as you go through the game. Uh, Dylan and I played this in about 10 hours overall. We were kind of at one point thinking we'd go for 100% and then we sort of burnt out right at the very end. We're like, let's just finish it. So we were like, got really close, but it was just a really fun time overall. And I'm definitely looking forward to playing the sequel, which I think just came out this year. Also, if you don't know, Konami just released the collection of DS Castlevania games. It's called the Domina, Dominus Collection, something like that. Um, and as usual, rather than start at the beginning, um, just like I did with the GBA games, I went right to the final game. Um, I had kind of been losing interest in the Castlevania Metroidvanias um, as I played through the GBA. I really didn't like Circle of the Moon at all. So I thought, okay, well, Aria of Sorrow was my favorite from the last collection, so I'm gonna go right to Dawn of Sorrow, which is like the sequel to this. And I'm still just finding like real diminishing returns from playing basically the same game over and over and over again. I know every game has their own system for like spells and abilities and things, but the level design, the music, it's the enemies, it's like gets really samey after a while. So I thought Dawn of Sorrow was overall like, it was fine. I played through the whole thing. I didn't have too much trouble with it. It uh, is on the easier side, I found, um, like way easier than Circle of the Moon, um, which is the last one I played. And I they also took like the beautiful pixel art portraits from Aria and made them these like, awkward anime portraits. The whole story is very kind of meh. Like I wasn't really interested in it or in any of the characters, although that's not, that's not news in a Metroidvania for me. But overall, I just thought it was fine. Like it played all right. The moves were decent. Like it wasn't clunky or anything. Um, I don't love grinding. So the fact that you have to kill enemies, sometimes multiple times for them to drop their shard or whatever the hell they drop so that you can use their powers is very annoying, especially when there are certain powers that you absolutely need to have if you want to get to the good ending of the game. I ended up just going to the normal bad ending because I was unwilling to farm for any more, any more monster abilities. But yeah, it was just, it was just fine. Like, I feel like I need to take a break of a few years before I try one of the other games in this collection because it's just like, how many games can you just copy Symphony of the Night but worse? The next game I finished was Phantasmagoria. This one is by Sierra, first came out in 1996, and I streamed this over a course of a number of weeks over on Twitch. Um, if you've seen my review of the original Phantasmagoria, I wasn't a big fan of that one. I found it exceedingly dull. However, this one I found handled everything much better. It's not really related to the first one in any way, aside from a brief uh, mention of the first game's protagonist. But in this one, you play a character named Curtis, who's kind of like a shy guy working in an office at a pharmaceutical company, and he seems to be having a mental health crisis as he's 
seeing visions and having hallucinations and then people around him all start dying and he's wondering if he's been doing it and he's also sp suspected by the police. Um, I just thought this was way better than the first one in terms of like the writing, the acting, and just how it was put together. Um, the first game had so many scenes, just long, drawn out, quiet scenes of the main character just like walking through a hallway or like opening a door and turning on a light and opening the hatch the basement or just sitting on a bed and looking around or checking her hair in the mirror. And this one had that to a minimum. There was like a few scenes where I was like, okay, this is a little bit dull, but like for the most part, there was always something happening. There was a conversation happening, a hallucination. You were like observing something important in those FMV scenes. It also looked like for the most part, this was just filmed like on location rather than green screen and digital uh, backgrounds for most of it. You do spend quite a lot of time just in your office kind of bothering your coworkers and sending and reading emails, which are actually some of the funniest parts of the game. I really like the emails. Um, overall, I just thought this was pretty entertaining. It was also very spicy. Uh, Curtis has a work girlfriend and then a second work girlfriend who's just constantly sexually harassing him and they go to BDSM clubs and uh, yeah, just like more interesting subject matter. Um, I did have one problem at the end of the game, they sort of throw this puzzle at you that where I was just like, I don't even know what you're asking me to do. So that was kind of annoying and kind of, I felt kind of came out of left field. It didn't help that the first time I got there, my game crashed and I lost an hour of progress because I hadn't been saving, which is on me, but that was annoying. So I had to replay like the last hour of the game. But overall, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, you know, I love FMV games. And so I would recommend Phantasmagoria 2 if you like them as well. Another game I just played on stream that I had been wanting to check out for a while is World of Horror. And this is developed by Pants Tats. Maybe that's how you say it. It just came out, I think, October of last year. And this is a sort of roguelite narrative adventure um, based on the works of Junji Ito. You'll notice like some of the stories and some of the art is very uh, familiar looking. It takes place like you're on an old Mac computer, like with the all the windows and everything from that. Um, you're in this town, something weird is happening and you have to solve a bunch of mysteries fight a bunch of monsters. You go through and you go to various locations. There can be like little encounters and you have to make a decision on how to react to them. And then you can like lose health or lose sanity or maybe gain an item. And there is turn-based combat as well. I wasn't a huge fan of the combat. Um, I ended up putting the difficulty down to a lower level just because I found the combat so incredibly punishing the first couple times that I played it and I really just wanted to you know see where the stories went and overall it was okay I found the roguelite aspect took away more than it added because you know because of the randomization you were seeing some events kind of over and over again which was a little bit boring it also made the story not make a whole lot of sense like just how things lined up didn't didn't really flow well. Like you'd something would happen and then you'd be like, oh, but then this, it kind of contradicted the last thing you did. So I found it was a little sort of messy in that way, but I really liked the aesthetic of it and the idea of it. But once I sort of got through and solved my five cases and got to the end of the game once, I felt like I was done and probably won't be compelled to play it again. I also played through Creatures of Ava, which is a newer game. It just came out this year. It is by Inverge Studios and it's currently on Game Pass. This is one I haven't really seen too many people talking about. I had downloaded it just as like, oh, maybe someday I'll check this out. It looks kind of cute. And then once I actually gave it a shot, I ended up really liking it and playing through it over the course of a few days. Um, it's sort of an open world game 
where you play someone working for this company that's trying to save this planet. This planet is being taken over by something called the withering, which is infecting animals and the environment. And so you're going down to this planet to try to um, cure the animals as well as beam them up to your I don't know, spaceship or whatever, in order to save them from this withering that's just gonna take over the entire planet. But while you're there, all of the natives of the planet who you keep telling them, hey, I'm here to save you, I'm here to save you, and they're like, no, nah, we don't need saving, we're good. And you seem to have a fundamental miscommunication of what exactly is happening here. And the dialogue is also very amusing. I really liked the way it was written. Uh, but in terms of gameplay, you go and you explore this world, you can find the animals, if they're infected, you can cure them, you have like a magic staff type thing. And then you also get a flute and you can play the animals a tune and they'll sort of follow you like the Pied Piper. So you can take the animals over to a bot that will beam them up or you can use their abilities. So there's certain things in the environment um, like fences that need to be broken down or um, bridges that need to be put down so that you can cross them and you can use the specific animal abilities to interact with the environment to change it around you so that you can access uh, more things as you go. There's also things like zip lines that you can put up which create shortcuts between uh, different areas of the game so you're constantly sort of opening up new paths for yourself. There's little collectibles and things you can find. You can gather plants and make uh, consumables to increase your health or reduce poison or um, undo stuns or things. Uh, the infected animals will kind of fight you so you'll have to be running around and dodging as you're as you're doing the curing of them. And also the first thing that really appealed to me about the game is that there's a sort of photography scanning mechanic. So for every animal you need to take a picture of it while it's infected and while it's not infected and you need to like pet it after you cured it or you need to use their abilities or you need to beam a certain amount up to the planet. So I really liked that of sort of capturing via photo all of the animals as well as all the people you talk to on the planet um, and you sort of collect those in your photo book. Um, I, overall I thought it was really fun game. It was, you know, I'm not a huge open world person, but the open world was sort of contained enough that I didn't feel overwhelmed by it. I would say it was on the, for me, on the longer side, around maybe 15 to 20 hours. I don't know exactly, but uh, I had a really good time with it. It was very sort of chill, cozy game. Like it wasn't too strenuous or asking too much of me. It was just like, a nice story with nice interactions with characters and, you know, collecting and saving these animals as you go. So yeah, I recommend Creatures of Ava if that sounds good to you. And then a couple games that were retired this month. The first is Remnant 2. This is by Gunfire Games from 2023. Uh, in my co-op game night, we had been playing this sort of on and off. Uh, the problem is we have four players for co-op game night and Remnant is a three player game so we'd only play it while someone was missing and I was the one missing for the whole month of October so I think the, um, the other three went and played through and finished the game so I probably won't be playing it anymore that's why it's being retired but I thought Remnant was actually a really cool game it's like a action adventure kind of game um, I don't even know how to describe it because I was never the one in charge. I, it was always Michelle's game. So we just sort of jumped from planet to planet, but it's like third person action. You pick a class, you can pick your weapons and various um, accessories and things. And you go around fighting enemies. Like I wouldn't know. I don't know if I'd call it soulsy, a little bit soulsy, but what I really liked about it is that every area you went to was completely different. Like there was a big ornate castle. There was a uh, level that looked like the planet from Prometheus. Um, and the real standout were the boss fights. Um, it wasn't just your basic hit, hit, dodge, run away. They were really like puzzly kind of boss fights. I think I did maybe four of them over the course of me playing with the group. 
Um, just things like you have to like run down this spiral tunnel and stop and take out all these lightning things and or one that was this big like cube that rolled around and you had to find the safe spots to stand so it didn't step on you and while you were um, hitting particular targets. Just really cool, interesting, very strategic boss fights that I liked a lot. Um, yeah, I think Remnant 2 is great if you have a group to play it with, or if you want to play it alone, I would definitely recommend it. But yeah, I think I'm just retiring it because my other friends are done and I don't want to play alone. And the last thing is Persona 3 Reloaded, which just came out this year. Um, it is the remake of the Atlas game from 2006. This is a JRPG where you are a high school student, but also in this secret group who fights evil at night. That's a very basic and not entirely accurate description. Uh, but it sort of mixes social high school bits with dungeon delving. And when I first put this on, I was absolutely hooked. I was actually mad because I was like, oh shit, I know this is like an 80 hour game. I don't want to spend 80 hours on this, but like the first two hours were so good. Like it's so stylish, the music's excellent. Even the menus and things look great. Uh, being introduced to this world and going out during the dark hour and there's just these weird coffins standing up everywhere and finding out what that's all about and going to this tower and exploring it were really, really cool. And I was like, wow, I'm very interested. I wanna know what's going on. And then I played another four or five hours and was just like, does anything ever happen in this game? Uh, yeah, so it's basically a loop. You have a week, day, during the day, you go to school, after school, you pick an event, you can like go work your after school job to get money, or you can hang out with a friend to build a relationship with them. Um, building relationships also impacts your personas, which are kind of like summons when you're in combat in the dungeon. Um, at night, you can go to the dungeon and the dungeon was cool the first couple times, and then I got to the end of it and it was like, oh, we can't go any further, we'll just have to wait for something to happen, you'll know what it is. So I was playing like day after day after day after day, the thing isn't happening, day after day, it's still not happening. So I ended up googling it, like, is Persona 3 boring? And uh, most of the results were like, oh, it takes a while, but like, after by the midway point, the story is amazing. I was like, well, I'm not playing this for 20 or 30 or 40 hours and waiting for it to get good. So yeah, after about six hours with Persona 3, when nothing had happened, um, I got pretty bored. So I decided to retire that one, which I'm not entirely sad about because I don't really want to play an 80 hour game. But yeah, kind of disappointing. Just the, the first hour or two just like had me so hooked and I was like finally a JRPG for me and then it just uh just ground to a halt um it's also really hard to tell like what you're leveling up like you're have three different like smarts and charm and bravery and you can see like oh this contributed to that but there's no like bars or anything to tell you like am I close to the next level it's just like yep something went in there not gonna tell you what it is, just, I don't know. It wasn't for me after all. So yeah, that was Persona 3. So that's it for my October updates. Leave me a comment, let me know what you've been playing, if you've gotten any interesting pickups. Um, also, if you have any co-op games you wanna suggest, uh, specifically for my new series on co-op games that I should check out and make a little mini review of, uh, let me know that. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. If you want to see more, go check out my last short look at playing Cat's Quest 2 co-op, or another of my videos. I have a Patreon if you want to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.